Hey, it's Andrew here from Home Theatre Engineering. Welcome back. Today we're talking about colour space. Okay, so hopefully we'll get through this. My neighbour suddenly decided to get his whipper snipper out and that's making life really, really difficult at the moment, but we'll see how we go. I've had about five attempts at this and um, I guess it's not legal to kill your neighbour for manicuring his lawn, but we'll see how we go. Okay, colour space is an interesting thing, folks, because it's uh, it explains what we see on our TVs and projectors, but it also talks about how our um, films are made. Uh, but most of all, and one of the things that's interesting me at the moment is how the um, marketers sell us product. And that's something that's bothering me at the moment. Now, in front of us, you can see a color chart. This is the CIE color chart. And the whole area that's colored in is the color space and that's representing what the human eye can see. Within that are three triangles. The smallest one is the REC709 color space or BT709. The slightly larger one is DCI-P3, um, and that's obviously expanded the colour space a bit. And then the largest one is BT-2020. Now, REC 709 is what we've been working with. That's your standard TV, Blu-rays, etc. DCI-P3 is what obviously things are being filmed in, and BT-2020 is where we're trying to get to, and that um, is actually what you think that you're getting you know, from your ultra-high definition, and it's actually a package or a wrapper or a container, and within that you can be sent REC 709 or BT-2020, uh, sorry, DC, DCI-P3. You'd be surprised to know that a lot of ultra-high definition stuff is actually still in 709. Um, but more and more content's coming out that is obviously filmed in DCI P3 and um, and actually mastered in in that color space. So now, if you pay attention, you'll see a dot there, and that's D65. And this represents the white point. Um, now, everywhere on this two-dimensional map has a coordinate. If you look, you can see the X and Y coordinates on the charts, and I happen to know that the white point is 0 0.313 by uh, 0 0.329. Now, that would find our white point. But the point is that um, white is also black, um, and black is made out of 0% uh, red, green, and blue, and white is 100% red, green, and blue, and everything in between is grey. Now, the question is, where are the greys? Can't see them on this chart at all, right? All you've got is a black dot, which is also a white dot, by the way, but we've only got one single point. And the interesting thing is this applies to all colours. We should be able to see a column or a detail for all colours, but we can't. I can only see the one spot for white. Why is this? Well, let's take a look. Okay, what they've done here is they've put all the colours onto a polar chart, um, a circular chart. From the centre out, which is our white point, as we go outside towards the edge, the colour gets stronger and stronger and stronger, and that is saturation. That is how much red or green or blue you get as you rotate around that's how that color is shifted towards you know the color that it's not so red shifts towards either blue or yellow or green um, blue shifts either towards green or red and so on and so forth so you can see that rotation is your hue so from the center out is saturation okay a great change there but let's drop down to the chart at the bottom right there and you can see a little arrow pointing up and if you can read it on your screen it says lightness that is the big giveaway. That is the bit that's missing. So if you take a two-dimensional chart and I gave you coordinates like on, on Earth, you could find anywhere on Earth with those two coordinates, just like a GPS. But if I wanted to you know, give you a location underwater or in space, I'd have to give you at least three coordinates. And that's the same with color. We don't work in a two-dimensional color world. We actually work in a three-dimensional color world, and this is it. Now you can see here that our two-dimensional chart is lying on the ground. It's flat. It represents very few colours at all. In fact, an infinitesimal amount of colours really. And you can see on the chart that's for reference listed as a, um, a luminance level of 1. Now I'm talking about the scale on the left that goes vertically and you can see it goes 1, 10, 100, 1000 and 10,000. Okay, let's have a quick look at that. Inside of those cubes, you can see one mark BT709. That is the Blu-ray standard TV color space. And then you see a much larger one, which the smaller one fits in probably at least four times. And that is BT2020. It is massively larger than the BT709 color space. But look at the left-hand side. Now, that represents luminance. 
right? So through the centre would be that white point, and on the ground it would be black, and at the very top it would be white. And then the same applies to the colours. Now notice that green is much stronger, you can get much more green vertically than you can say red, and blue you can't get much at all. In fact blue, blue wipes off and comes down quite low. <coughs> so um, that is the key, that big Y stands for luminance or lightness, and that is how um, much light energy there is in your red, green, blue, cyan, magenta and yellow. So we are not dealing in a two-dimensional colour space, but very much in a three-dimensional colour space. And so black is on the bottom for our white point, white is at the top. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take you to um, Calman, which is what I calibrate with. So let's have a look at that. Okay, so uh, in Calman, I'm just going to pop across to this. What you can see here is that... Um, in the centre is our white point. Now I've taken a, um, this is uh, a virtual scan, this is not a TV, and for those calibrators, yes, this is probably one of the worst you'll ever see. Um, but the point here is this dot, for example, here, belongs out in this square. This is the 100% red point, and it belongs here. So for me to adjust that, I would have to rotate it around, which is your hue, and I would have to increase the saturation to move it out. Um, let's take one of the close ones, yellow, 100% white point for 100% uh, point for yellow is the dot belongs in that square there. This is P3 color space inside of a BT2020 container. Okay, so um, you can see here that the hue. Um, it, these are errors, by the way. So this is hue and saturation. So this is saying how much error is in the hue, um, and so it's saying I've got to reduce the error in the hue to get it back onto this line. And then I have to change the saturation, um, actually, so we're talking about the yellow one, um, to bring it onto this line and then increase the saturation to move it out. Uh, again, we're looking at a two-dimensional chart. So what's going on? Well, over here is the third dimension. Okay, this is the luminance. And this is the big deal because my concern is a lot of manufacturers are saying that we do um, 99 or 100 percent, for example, of DCI P3. Now the question is, what are they using as that metric? If they are using the full color volume, then that's fine. I can accept that. But what I'm finding on a lot of TVs is that, in fact, um, what they're talking about is um, uh, when I do a calibration, that this luminance I can't get anywhere near um, what it should be. Right? It's it's quite considerably out. So um, the important thing to know is, you know, how well that TV performs or projector performs in terms of luminance. And this opens an interesting um, can of worms because if we go back to our color cube, okay, that one at the moment, if we go back to our color cube, um, what we're saying is how much of this can you achieve? How much of the vertical column can you achieve in that space? Now this explains a few things because we recently tested a couple of projectors and one projector was um, uh, very different to the other even though the specifications were the same. They were both supposedly a 2000 lumen projector right. but one looked considerably brighter. Now often that lumen output is measured with white. Right Now so you're firing all three of your pixels together and producing as much light as you possibly can. But the question is, is it still producing that amount of light output at all of your colours. Are you getting all of your green, all of your red, all of your blue? And the answer is probably no. So if you take two 2000 lumen projectors and project them side by side and one looks much brighter than the other in terms of real images, that's because that projector is producing much more of your primary and secondary colours, your entire colour space in fact, with much more luminance. So the the image leaps off the screen and we're going to see this more I think with uh, special light sources like LEDs and lasers um, because they will be able to produce much more light output with the colours than opposed to just white. Okay, so that's going to be the advantage of having that kind of light source projector um, and um, we will be able to get much much better images and and that's the way it's going at the moment some projectors are like DLPs with uh, for example uh, an LED light source are producing spectacular um, red green and blues as as are some of the laser projectors 
So that's the difference between why you can look at one projector versus another with supposedly the same specifications, but one just leaves the other, you know, standing still. All right, so what we can do is we can actually assess um, a projector and you can see that from uh, this here. What I've done is I've actually scanned, taken, again, this is a virtual scan, this is not a real um, product, um, uh, but we've got this uh, 3D space here and I've sort of laid it out at the moment so you've got your green sort of where you know it is and your blue and your red but in fact um, once I've scanned all of the capabilities of that color space I end up with a three-dimensional space here so I've got they've used a b and normally we know that as x and y and l is luminance so this dot here at the bottom here that's black just there and this one here is 100% white for this um, supposed display and then we start to see the capabilities of the rest of the colors and you'll notice what's interesting is if you look at this and you remember that other color cube we were looking at how much green have we got All right you know um, and how much blue it's kind of it pushes out to a wedge doesn't it so um, now bear in mind this is not a real display I've taken this as a virtual scan um, but what I want to show you is these are the sorts of things that that we are seeing in terms of the capabilities of a display so I can take this display here I could take a full scan of the display now with cowman and then I can assess it against our actual color space and and so for example let's say we did have a pure bt 2020 capable projector or tv then the um, scan that 3d cube that i was just rotating should look like just like the bt 2020 color space that tall blocky um, odd shaped cube so there you go what i would like to see is what would be really cool is if manufacturers were honest enough to produce an actual scan of their color cube and then inlay it within much like that bt 709 is sitting inside of bt 2020 but if they actually produce that as as a representation of the capability of their projector or tv we would really know as customers what we can compare now look we have to be fair here you're not going to get a tv for 500 dollars that can do this all right it costs money to produce a great tv or projector Right. And there are st some limitations, of course. But wouldn't it be great if you could go to a shop, you could just look at this cube as a standard and you could glance around and then you could see, yes, $500 gets me something that sort of does 709 perhaps. Um, $100,000 gets me something that does BT 2020. $2,000 gets me something that does 80% of that cube. Let's try and get the manufacturers to reproduce this color cube this color volume as a true representation and um, you know how cool would that be well, imagine if you could go to their website and you could rotate this around and actually look and see what you're getting uh, for your for your money's worth so look i hope this has uh, helped you understand color space i hope it's given you an idea of how this all works and um look I, I look forward to your questions and comments and um yeah um if you've got uh, anything else that you'd like to know about this just drop us a line please as always subscribe uh, click the bell to get notifications and look there's some exciting stuff coming up we'll keep, be keeping you informed of um and we've got um yeah uh, watch this space basically so thanks again it's andrew here from home theater engineering really appreciate you being with us thank you